Welcome to a new episode of my Godot introduction series and if you watch the series the first time I would recommend to start from the beginning. In this tutorial I will cover the creation of a character in Godot um, from the very basic beginning and we will create a character that, is, that can move, jump and um, the final result will be something like that. So we have a movable char character uh, that can jump, um, that has animation applied to it and has a basic movement. Um, so if you haven't watched uh, the series before feel free to do it. And um, So in this uh, episode we will cover um, Godot scene system and I want to explain what it is, um, what you can do with it and why it is so powerful. So um, in Godot everything is uh, set up as nodes. So you have this node tree here uh, and you can apply new nodes to it, uh, add them, uh, add new nodes to other nodes and create your scene now. So um, this can get a little bit messy after a time. So if you have uh, lots of nodes and they have uh, further children nodes, you may have super uh, or have a lot of nodes and this is where the scene system of Godot comes in very handy. So what can you do with it? Well, we have just opened a scene here, so um, as you can see here. But what we also can do is we just se select this um, player here and convert it to a subscene. So why is, it, is this useful? Not only because we will um, we don't see all of these other nodes here, but um, you can instance uh, scenes very good, very good here. So, let's say I want to have two player uh, running at the same time. I just can duplicate them and just play with them. So it works. But what if I want to make some changes, and um, I want the changes to be applied everywhere, and I need to uh, take this player, make my changes. Let's say I want to move the nose here and play the game. Now I need to change it for the other character too. Um, in that case we just can use Godot Scene System. So we select the player and go to Scene, Convert to Subscene. And now we will call it Character. We can call it .scn or .xml. I will use .xml because um, .xml files you can uh, later open with an editor and um, see what is in there. And that's why I use .xml. So I just save it and now you see nothing happened because uh, now we have to add that subscene. Um, with, th with this button you can open different nodes and create new nodes and with the plus button you just can uh, load scenes. So um, we will select the character here and open him. Oh, and of course you have to select the world node because it will al always be appended to that node that is selected. So we will remove this one here again and just select the world node. Okay, open the character. And now we see we have two instances of the character. We can remove this one here and only use this this one. So if we start the engine, everything works as before. Um, but the cool thing is now we can also duplicate him. And if you want to make some changes, we cannot do it directly here because um, there's now a new, completely new scene. We can show the children to see if what is in there, but we cannot edit that at the moment. I think this will be added in the future versions of Godot, so you also can edit uh, sub-scenes here, but you just can jump right into the sub-scene. So you go uh, open editor, now you have only this scene here, uh, or this character. So you can make the changes you want. Let's say we want to move the sprite here a little bit, save it and jump back to the original scene and you see the changes have been made to um, to both uh, player instances. So, But you can still access all the export properties we have created and for both characters um, you can define them as you wish. So if you want to make him jump higher, just select them and type it in. So you see that uh, the right one is jumping much higher and it works out of the box. So you see this can come in very handy. 
But the cool thing is, you can even create more nested scenes. You can create scenes within scenes. So um, this will help you to structure your your um, characters a lot, because if you want to create a very basic character, let's say you want to create an enemy, and just put in um, a node with collisions in there, and you want to have different looking enemies, so you create this one enemy base uh, scene where you have all your logic and um, all the movements, and then you create a new can you create new scenes with sprites in it and uh, apply that different sprites to that scene and that way if you make changes to your enemy base scene they will be applied to all other enemies too and if you want to make some specific changes to uh, sprites you can just select um, that sprite scene and make the changes to that sprite scene so um, it will only affect the sprites in that scene and yes, I think um, if you just play around with it a little bit, you will notice that um, this is very powerful. It is, I think, even more powerful than the um, prefab system from Unity. Uh, it is a little bit similar, but the great thing is in Godot you can create as many sub scenes as you wish. So you can um, start with uh, creating a very basic scene for your character, then define a new scene and you can edit them all in their own uh, instance. So um, we will create the character as a, a um, separate um, scene here in this case. So it will not all only um, help you to keep the um, changes where you want them to be, but it is also cleaner in the, in the node tree here. So if we add the player here, we don't have all the drop downs here so we could say okay let's um, s save this as scene 2 and convert this sub to a sub scene and call it level ground element 0 1 for example uh, sorry dot xml you always have to specify the extension in godot so let's save it remove it from here and select the world node and add the level ground. So, bam, that's done. Now we just have to copy um, this one and we can create a level with it. So we can create some basic uh, level elements and just copy them and put them together and this works. So let's see if we... perfect. So you see our our character can, can run, run up here and that way you can easily create um, levels with Godot. Just duplicate it, rotate it here. If you want to rotate um, the node, you can just press Control and then um, rotate it. But only if you select uh, this button here. So with this one you can only move and with this one you can only rotate. But if you have this button selected, you also can scale it um, or move it or rotate it with control. So this is the scene system in Godot and I would really recommend uh, to make use of it because it's very powerful and it makes a lot of fun to use. Okay, uh, and now we will go into the Godot resource system. So um, if you have... let's let's go into that character directly, let's open him you can double click on nodes and if they are scene instances they will can be opened so um what is the resource system in godot or how does it work you have this scene tab here and this resource tab and there is nothing loaded so let's say we select the sprite and everywhere where you see such little icon you know that there is a resource assigned to it so if you want to go to into that resource you can press this little arrow here and yet then you will see that uh, the resource will pop up here. So let's do it. Now we see blue square PNG that is loaded. Um, you can see where, where it's stored and um, the different settings for it. You can um, make changes there. But uh, not only sprite, uh, sprites are resources but uh, collisions 
or collision shapes are also resources. So um, if you see the shape here and this this little icon, you just can press it and then you see that um, you can set the dimensions here in the resource. Um, now by default the resources are saved um, in Godot or in the scene itself. So or at least uh, the resources that they create from here. So the sprites have been assigned, assigned directly from um, our projects folder. That's why it, uh, why they also are saved there. But for example, you, we have this resource here, the rectangle shape, and is, it is by default saved in Golot itself. But if you want to say, I want to use this resource somewhere else, you just can say, okay, I want to save it, and say, save resource. You see that there's this res extension, and you can, for example, create um, a resource folder and put your resources in there, and then reuse them later. Um, this is maybe not not so um, important for collision shapes, but if we will start later to create animations, um, and we want to reuse animations or just keep them separate from our um, uh, character uh, uh, scene, we can store that, that resource somewhere else. So, um, just to get it right, um, Godot um, uses this little icon here to show if they have resources, and if you see that icon you just can press it and you will see that there is a resource assigned. Now in this case we, ha we don't have a resource, so that's why nothing opens, and this resource icons often um, create a new editor, and I will just show this right now. Let's say we have an animation node, and this we will cover in the uh, next tutorials, uh, how to create animations, and let's say we um, create a new animation. So we have this animation here, and here's the player. Now we can press this icon here, and you see that the animation resource is loaded. We can make our settings here, and we can also save it. And um, at the moment, the resource is saved internally in that scene, but we can save it externally and use it somewhere else too. So um, that's called resource the resource system um, very shortly or briefly explained. And um, but I think you just have to use it and try it out to make sure you get used to it. And yeah. I hope you liked that little introduction to scene to Godot scene system and to the resources in Godot and how they are used. And in the next video we will cover or we will start creating our character finally. So we will set up the sprites we need for our GBOT and start making a character rig so we can finally uh, go into animation. So we will create a complete setup with the bones here and we'll use that then in our later videos to animate him. Okay, thanks for watching and as always if you liked that video please feel free to subscribe and I've put up um, a github page now where you can download all the um, tutorial uh, results. You just have to go to that site. I will put it in the link description below. And then you have the releases here. And there you can download every single result of our tutorials and just use it and try it out. So, as always, thanks for, for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye!